So the last one is interleave division multiple axis. Now, in this case, all they do is that they take the symbol and they take an interleave pattern. Okay. So generally, let's say let's take an example of DSCDMA. DSCDMA is what? Anybody remember what is DS for? Direct sequence, not this way. Direct sequence, right? Direct sequence CDMA. In that we take the data symbols and we interleave them first. Did I put this together? Yeah, remove it. So basically, um, interleave. They will be interleave it. So what we do is we take the bits and we then mix them around, and then we go to the spreader. Then we change every bit to chip. Right? In IDMA, we take the symbols, spread them around first, and then we interleave them. And you don't have to spread them. Spreading is optional. So you can just take the bits as they are and interleave them. If everybody interleaves separate differently, and I know your interleave pattern, I can figure out what you sent. All right? So that's the whole thing is that this saves even, this gives you even more bits possible because your spreading sequence does not have to be very big. You could just be one bit for one chip, or one chip for one bit, rather than 11 chips for one bit, like we use in 11. Right? So what you do is you take the bits and interleave it. So we are taking, let's say interleave pattern is 2, 4, 3, 1. What that means is I take the second symbol first. Then the fourth symbol, then the third symbol, and then the one symbol, and the first symbol. Now, in this simple example, every symbol is one digit. So I will take the second one, which means one, then three, two, zero. Right? Then I will take the next four symbols, and I will take five. Five, no, six, five, two, four, three, one. So two is um, five, two, four is eight. Do it yourself, man. Five and seven. <laughs> you can figure it out what I mean, right? Take the second symbol in the, out of the four, take four, then take the fourth one, then take the third one, and take the one. Huh? Now this is the code. Two, four, three, one is is the code that the select that the user has selected. Okay, that's the code. <laughs> that pattern is specific to the user. Oh, what does it, a spreader takes one bit and makes multiple chips out of it? A spreader spreads. In time or frequency, whatever. So this is this 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 is already a spreader there. Are. So whatever this is this is you know this is inside this box. What is coming out? Interleaver simply takes the chips. So these are actually the chips, if you want to call them. Uh, no, see, in this case, it is not optional. In DS CDMA, direct sequence CDMA, okay. if you don't have a spreader, you can't do anything. Everybody will collide. Oh, okay. so IDMA is optional. Okay. okay. So, so far, the techniques that we have talked about, they were mostly related to modulation, multiplexing, things like that, right? Then I took out the nine techniques, which are really not modulation. These are somehow given the same herd. How can we make better use of the same herd? The same same band, right? And then we'll talk about how to get more band. But and suppose you don't get any more band, can we still do better than 4G? So these are nine techniques. And we'll go through them one by one, except the last one I will not go through. Higher order modulation simply means that we'll use COM64 or COM256. That's you know, space forward, you understand that, right? So other than that, what is 3D beamforming? 
So basically, most of the transmission right now is in 2D. Basically, when you have a vertical antenna, all the energy goes in the horizontal plane. Okay, and that is how they make the amplification. So basically, what happens is if you have an antenna which is omnidirectional, it will be sending something into the sky, something to the ground, and something this and that. And a directional antenna will compress it down to horizontal. Okay, so what happens is more of the energy goes into the people and not to the sky. Now, if people live in the high rise and they live in the sky, then what do we do? All right, then we need 3D environment. Right? So, some people living on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, they can be covered, and people living on the ground can be covered as well. All right? And this is basically a special case of full dimension mind. Now, 3D is not the end. You could have a lot more antennas and a lot more control over things, and so that is basically, if you have large number of antennas, if you have infinite antennas, then it is massive MIMO, and um, and then, you know, full dimension MIMO is the same name, and 3D is basically same name for the, for the 3D beam farming, same name as 3D MIMO, or full dimension MIMO. Okay, clearly? Okay, right. She wrote a paper on the whole thing, so the whole paper 15 pages. Okay. <laughs> All right. So everybody understands 3D MIMO now, right? So now we we have to worry about where the users are exactly, not just in horizontal direction. If they're living in third floor, they won't get the signal before. Third way we can get more hertz, and more yeah, more hertz is that. The, if, if I have two spectrums, one is designed for FDD and one designed for TDD. Okay, I got some FDD from 2G and I got some TDD from 4G. Can I combine them? So far you cannot. Now you can. So actually it turns out some of this has already happened in 3GPP, release 13 and 14. So what is happening is release 16 will be 5G. Release 11 or 10 was 4G. So after that 4G, Whatever is happening is 4.xg slowly will become 5g. Okay, so we are already in release 13 is out. Release 14 is being designed, and 15 and 16. That's it. You know, 16 is 5g. All right. So this is this is something that um, they have already thought about, and that is that you have this FDD which is given to you as a pair. Pair means this can go up, this can come down. Right, and TDD, which is bidirectional, time division duplexing, you use half time this one and half time that one. So in either case, you use only half of the spectrum. In this case, when you're talking up, you're not using down spectrum. In this case, when you're talking up, you're not using the down direction. Right, so they said, why can't we use both directions? Exactly, sorry, I'm a bit ahead of myself. So they said, why can't we combine these two? Y direction is coming in a minute. So, but the thing is, so now what you can do is you can take this up and this up and talk at the same time. You can get 20 plus 20, 40 megahertz. 20 of the FDD, 20 of the TDD. Similarly, in the down direction, you can take 20 of this and 20 of that, or whatever, right? So, this is combining of FDD and TDD spectrum is what is called FDD TDD carrier integration. And right now, there are only five carriers that can be combined, but the plan is to allow to 32 carriers. No, these are not sub carriers. There are 32 carriers, means 32 bands. Right? 22, 20 megahertz is one band, one carrier. All right, is this clear? So the next thing is distributed antenna system. Also, this has happened. Basically, if you live in a high rise, then how do you get the signal? 3D MIMO is one of them. Another one is to put the antenna in your building. So you can put one antenna in every floor. If there's a big antenna on the top, from there you run a cable to every antenna on the floor. So regardless of which floor you live in, you are covered. 
This is called distributed antenna system. Now this one is one antenna, one cable. If you have multiple antennas, you need multiple cables. Right? And sometimes the RF signal is converted to it. Now what you bring down is also another choice you have. You can just bring down the RF signal as it is and broadcast, or you can convert into digital and do something. So yeah. Currently? So if you go back to, I, I'm not going to say about 4G, but suppose you go back to 3G or something, if you live on the high floor, you are in trouble. It's just like you live in the suburb, you are in trouble. And so this is um, basically trying to cover everybody. 